Uh, okay, so uh, hello everyone. I'm Moin, a PhD candidate at the University of Auckland. Uh, generally, we are working on the vibration mitigation by using nonlinearity uh, with Veladislav and Brian. And today I want to present some part of our work, which is effect of multiple incident waves on the reflection coefficient in an Euler beam with a nonlinear boundary stiffness. So I will start with introduction and background and uh, finish with next phase of our project. Uh, so first, let's talk about the importance of our work. So as I mentioned, uh, we want to suppress vibration in continuous structures by using nonlinearity and to reduce uh, vibration in this kind of system like beams and rods, we use attachments like springs and absorbers. And generally, we use a wave approach to investigate the vibration mitigation. Uh, some works have been done in this area, and uh, these are two main works. Uh, first, in uh, 1993, Vekakis worked on uh, this model. So, as we can see, these are actual waves, and this is a semi infinite rod. Uh, we have nonlinear boundary spring here, and uh, this in this work, uh, only one incident wave was considered. Uh, but higher harmonic reflected waves and different number of reflected waves were considered. And then uh, in following of this study in 2014, Brennan worked on uh, actual and also bending waves, uh, but in this work only one incident wave and one reflected wave uh, were considered. In both works, the dimensionless parameters uh, were defined with respect to a linear stiffness, and also the nonlinearity was assumed to be weak. Uh, so our work will uh, be considered as an extension of these two works. Um, in previous study, as I mentioned, they uh, studied the behavior for weak nonlinearity and only uh, considering one incident wave and a restricted number of reflected waves. And dimensionless parameter and weak nonlinearity were defined uh, respect to the linear boundary stiffness or linear force. So the case of essential nonlinearity was also stud uh, studied. The case of Essential nonlinearity is the case when uh, the linear stiffness is uh, zero and only uh, nonlinear stiffness exists in the system, which will uh, probably produce stronger nonlinearity. And also, the effect of multiple incident waves were not considered, and uh, we will show that uh, the magnitude and phase of uh, second or certain incident waves uh, can have a profound effect on the reflection coefficients. So uh, this is the beam that we have considered. So there is a, a nonlinear boundary spring uh, at the end of the beam. And this is a semi-infinite Euler beam. Uh, so these are the wave component. We consider the solution uh, in form of waves. We have incident waves, a n plus, uh, and uh, with frequency n omega, and then a n minus, which are the reflected waves, and uh, reflected near fit wave, which are a uh, capital N. Uh, so all of these wave components are complex and have a magnitude and phase. And this is the equation of motion, uh, which is a very well known equation for Euler beam. And these are the boundary condition. So uh, it should be noted that in the boundary condition, we consider cubic nonlinearity. So uh, only odd harmonics will exist in the system. Uh, so uh, in our definition, uh, we consider dimensionless parameters with respect to a reference frequency. And we will have three dimensionless parameter. This is frequency ratio. Uh, this will denote the uh, linear effects of the system, and this will represent the nonlinear effect of the system. And now we uh, need some wave coefficients. So for the wave coefficients, uh, we normalize all of the waves uh, with respect to A1 plus, which is the first incident wave. So this is the ratio between the uh, end uh, incident wave and first incident wave, which is alpha n. And this is the reflection coefficient, a n minus divided by a1 plus, and this is reflection coefficient for the near field waves. If we put uh, all these together, uh, the displacement of the beam can be written in this uh, as a superposition of all wave components, and this is uh, wxt, which is the displacement of the beam. So if we put this displacement into the boundary condition and use these dimensionless parameters, uh, this results in this equation. So this is the final equation that we have, and uh, we have infinite number of equations because we have Rn and omega alpha n, and everything is ter uh, are in terms of n. Uh, so this equation shows that the reflection coefficient, which are Rn, uh, 
uh, are uh, functions of frequency ratio, linear stiffness, nonlinear stiffness, and also alpha n, which is uh, uh, this parameter shows the effect of uh, multiple incident waves. So for example, when we have only one incident wave, alpha n would be equal to zero. Uh, for the linear system, uh, A will be equal to zero because A is the uh, nonlinear effects, and this equation will be reduced to this expression, and we know that uh, for linear system, the magnitude of reflection coefficient is always equal to one. And the essential nonlinearity case, which uh, is interest in this study, uh, is when uh, capital K is equal to zero. So when capital K is equal to zero, we can define a new parameter, which is gamma, and this is A divided by frequency ratio. So uh, the main equation will be reduced to uh, this equation at the bottom of the page for the case of essential nonlinearity in terms of gamma. So in this equation, we have Rn, alpha n, and gamma, all the three parameters. To solve the equation, we use harmonic balance method and truncate equation and some final uh, value. And then uh, we have two options for analytical solution. Uh, we use a method of expansion in a small parameter, which is a perturbation method. And for numerical solution, we use Levenberg algorithm in MATLAB. Uh, so first, I want to show the results for numerical and a small parameter expansion solutions. So these are the uh, results for R1 and R3. These are magnitudes of R1 and R3, and these are the phases of R1 and R3. Uh, so equation have been solved for case of one incident wave and two reflected waves, and for the essential nonlinearity. So we can see that uh, there is a good agreement uh, when nonlinearity is weak between two methods. Uh, we consider the second order expansion, and if we want to have a good agreement in higher values of gamma, we should uh, consider more terms of uh, expansion. But for the numerical solution, we can see that uh, at some values of gamma, we have minimum re uh, reflection coefficient, which is about 0 0.8. And uh, we have exactly at this point, we have maximum at reflection coefficient of the third harmonic, which is about 0 0.15. So this is uh, because of energy conservation and because energy is conserved uh, the, from first harmonic energy leaks to the third harmonic. And it is not always equal to one in contrast to the linear case. To uh, see the ac uh, accuracy and the convergence of this method, we truncate the equation for N3, 5, 7, and 9 and to see the effects of higher harmonics. So uh, as we can see between this uh, black and blue line, which is N3 and 5, we have a significant difference uh, between the magnitude of R3 and also R1. Uh, but uh, the point is the qualitative behavior uh, for N3 and N5 are almost same. So we consider N3 for the rest of the results. And uh, the other thing is that N5 will give us very accurate results. Uh, and the other uh, conclusion that can be seen in these figures is that as we increase the number of harmonics, the reflection coefficient decreases. So for example, if we compare R3 and R7, so it is 0 0.015 and 10 times smaller than R3. And as we increase, for example, R9 will be smaller than R7. And this is also another figure to show the conservation of energy. So uh, if we consider pi n uh, as a, a power in each harmonic, for example, this is pi 1, pi 3, pi 5, and so on. So we can see that pi 1 is a uh, order 1, and uh, most of energy are in the first and third harmonics, and uh, higher um, other higher harmonics have very less energy. So the second slide will uh, show us the effect of multiple incident waves. So we can we, uh, truncate the equations for two incident and two reflected waves uh, at, at n equal to 3. And we want to see the effects of phi 3, which is the phase of second incident wave, and also uh, alpha 3, which is uh, magnitude of alpha 3, which shows, shows us the effect of magnitude of second incident wave. So first we consider alpha 3 constant and equal to 1, and uh, show the results for different values of phi 3. So as we can see here in this area, when phi 3 is uh, close to 0, the magnitude of R1 is maximum, and in this area of uh, phi 3 is equal to pi and very close to pi, uh, the reflection coefficient is minimum. And exactly when R1 is minimum, R3 is maximum, and also vice versa. 
The other thing that can be seen in this figure is the range of R1, so it is between 0 0.5 and 2.5, which is about two uh, difference, but uh, it is larger than R3, which shows that the effect of second incident wave is more profound on the first incident, uh, first reflected wave. And also we have some jumps and gap here, and I will talk about this later in the next slides. So first, let's see the effect of uh, magnitude of alpha 3. So results are shown for phi 3 equal to 0 and uh, pi. First, for phi 3 equal to pi, uh, results are obtained for different values of alpha 3. And we can see that in this area, uh, R1 is maximum and it is 2.4. Uh, and uh, alpha 3 will be equal to 1.5. So we can see that in contrast to the uh, case of one incident wave, uh, in some area we can see uh, reflection coefficient is significantly larger than one. And the other thing that we can see here in the third reflection coefficient, uh, alpha 3 is almost equal to R3, which shows the dominance of the third incident wave. And uh, we can see that uh, the incident wave of the third harmonic have profound effect on R1, but not on R3. So results are shown also for phi 3 equal to pi, and then we have minimum reflection about 0 0.4. So if you remember for the case of one incident wave, it was about 0 0.8, and this value is half of uh, case of one incident wave, and it uh, tells us that with two incident wave, we can have a much uh, more mitigation than the case of one incident wave. And also we have some jumps here, and I want to talk about these jumps in the next slides. So first, see the jumps uh, for different values of phi 3. Just to remind you, this is uh, zooming in of this figure. So we had some jumps here, and then uh, let's look at these jumps. So in this uh, value, we have two solutions for R1 and R3, at least we have two solutions. So we have jumps up and jumps down. For example, uh, here uh, for the green line, uh, we have lower branch jump up and then upper branch. And exactly in the same value for R3, we have jumps down. So when we have jumps up here, we have jumps down here. This is because of uh, energy conservation between R1 and R3. And also these are the jumps for different values of alpha 3. So uh, again, when we have jumps up or jumps down here uh, in the opposite direction, we have for R3. And the, uh, one of the interesting thing is that, for example, here, when we have alpha 3 equal to 0 0.4, uh, which will be in this area, we have only one solution. Or here, when we have alpha 3 equal to 0 0.9, we will have only one solution. Uh, but in this area, we will have multiple solution. So a numerical study have been performed to find the uh, area that we have multiple solution. So we can see in this figure that inside this blue area, we will have multiple solution, which shows us that uh, the effects of nonlinearity are stronger here. And outside of this uh, area, we have only one solution for the reflection coefficients. Finally, I want to talk about the next phase of our project. We want to uh, do the things experimentally. So uh, in the dynamic and control lab of University of Auckland. Uh, so we want to use sandbox uh, for fixing the end because uh, it reduced the reflection of the waves. And then uh, we will use a shaker for nonlinear boundary. Uh, we may use a magnetic field or two parallel springs. So we are thinking about this, but uh, Probably we will use uh, both of them to validate the results uh, experimentally as well. Yeah, that was my presentation. Thank you uh, for your attention, and I will appreciate if you have any comments. Okay, thank you very thank much you very for much. your presentation. So <clears throat> you are right on time. So do we have any questions?